Good evening and uh, welcome to the June 15th meeting of the Revere City Council Subcommittee on Ways and Means. Everyone, please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, into God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, will you please call the roll of the uh, members attending? Roll call of the members of the City Council Ways and Means Subcommittee. Councillor Janino is absent. Councillor Morabito is absent. Councillor Patch here? Yep. Yeah. Councillor Rotundo is absent. And Councillor Powers? Here. Yeah. Here. And we, we do have a quorum because oh, Councillor Hass uh, is sorry, automatically Council President member Hass. of the committee. First item on the agenda is the Inspectional Services Department. Mr. Catanazzo. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, Nick Catanazzo, Director of Inspectional Services. What I'm going to do is uh, open each department up for questions, and then if anybody has any recommendations uh, prior to the next meeting, uh, which will be the final meeting of the Committee on Ways and Means, then you can submit them and we'll take them under advisement at that point. I'm going to call on uh, Mr. President, Councilor Haas. Paul, you, 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 you have any questions on the budget? So I'm here um, representing six, the six groups that I'm uh, in charge of, uh, which would be the uh, uh, Building Department, Health Department, Weights and Measures Department, uh, substance, uh, substance Abuse, uh, Healthy Communities, and uh, the School Nurses. So that covers uh, the six uh, groups that um, the ISD is in charge of at present time. So um, if you have any questions on any of them, I'd like to. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Council, Uh Since your department, some of the people are retiring, how many openings do you presently have there? Uh, ba basically, we're, uh, right now we're looking, uh, we're looking for an electrical inspector right now. We have out there right, eight. We only have a part-time electrical inspector, but as you know, uh, Right now, with all the uh, building and construction going on in, within the city, yeah. uh, that we uh, it's just inadequate to have a part time in, uh, uh, inspector. So plus, uh, all these solar companies that are coming into the city, they all need an electrical inspection. So, the average day for an uh, electrical inspector in the city right now could be from 2017 to 20 something inspection, which is impossible for a part time employee. Um, Right now, the, uh, my, jo my job uh, basically will be, uh, they're still working on my, uh, my job. To, it hasn't been uh, posted yet. Also, the uh, food, in uh, food inspector, Tony D'Agosta, is uh, retired. Uh, his job hasn't been posted yet. Uh, so we'll possibly, uh, <clears throat> within the department, we'll probably be moving somebody up into the food, uh, food you know, within the, uh, we have somebody that's qualified to do food inspections but that will leave an opening for a sanitation inspector. So uh, probably we got, within our department, three, uh, three, three openings, uh, I would say. Uh, electrical inspector, um, depending how the uh, mayor wants to format uh, my job, uh, and uh, Tony's job will be taken over by somebody internally, and then we'll just hire an outside sanitation inspector. Is uh, that advertised yet, Nick? Huh? Is that Tony's job advertised as of yet? Uh, no, it has not been. No, right. no. Let me ask you a question pertaining to the electrical inspector. Sure. Uh, you know, they just put them on a roof. 
Yeah. So who checks to make sure the roofs are adequately structured that they can take that weight? Oh, uh, basically, it's the uh, building department. Uh, building the pot, building inspector would check that. Yeah. Would that be like Benny going out checking? Yeah, well, you know, no, no, I mean, I, it could be any building inspector. They're all certified. Uh, it could be a building inspector plus the fire department has to check to make sure there's adequate room in the event of uh, a fire that they can walk up on top right. of the roof. Yeah. You, you know, get to have a, like a walkway. That's what they uh, uh, require. So it's basically a joint effort, and the electrical part is for the ele electrical inspector. So it's basically three different entities have to check. Uh, check that out okay so that they adequately check it no question absolutely yes very good it's good to have you here yeah at thank least, you at least two days two days a week, days a week. Yeah. nothing yeah you know you did a good job thank yeah you. thank you i thank appreciate you. it thank you thank you, you councilman hess council patch thank you mr chairman uh Nick, I, I, again, it's uh, like I said before for the uh, Monday, this past Monday uh, with the uh, everybody else, all the other uh, directors and chiefs, uh, it's a very uh, lean budget. Um, I, uh, you know, I just wa I want to make, actually I want to make one point before I start. Uh, sure. I, I, I noticed on... Uh, social media, how somebody kind of criticized the council because we haven't added added uh, money to the budget uh, for positions or, or, or stuff. Uh, and I just want to make it clear that we're not, we're not, a, we, we can't add money uh, right. to the budget. We can only I take money sure. uh, 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 from the budget. Correct. And, um, and I just want the people out there to understand that, that this is basically the, the mayor's budget. And uh, as I said, he's done a, as far as I see, a pretty good right. job, but it's very lean. Yeah. Um, uh, so I just want yeah. to put that out there. So they, yeah, uh, the only thing we're trying to, we're, we're working on is basically to uh, <clears throat> probably increase the uh, budget on uh, uh, rodent uh, control. Uh, it's totally right now. It's totally inadequate. It's about fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. Um, seeing where it's not just Revere; it's surrounding towns. We're having a it's a huge rodent issue, as everybody knows, and we get a ton of calls on it. So the mayor's thinking. Uh, he asked me to come up with a figure, and I said probably another thirty thousand. We could take out of the forty U funds, which we brought in over a million dollars this year, uh, and forty U, which is a tremendous amount of money for over the last. Uh, few years so it's been a big increase so you know that's sort of a drop in the bucket to transfer some of that money out of the 40U program um, and, and the mayor's working on that and he agreed that we have to do something so uh, yeah. uh, well that'd be great I, I, yeah I'd be yeah definitely in favor well he's of, all for it too for that, that. Yes. mayor of Eagle's all for that yes so I just want to make a comment on that uh, as far as uh, you know I didn't know you were coming for all these Department, so I just prepared for the building and inspection. Uh, well, I, well that's I mean, okay. Uh, I can make a shot. I can, you know, <laughs> I can find something to do. No, but uh, um, <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, you answered the question the councilor asked. That uh, I know you're uh, revamping over there. Everybody's uh, either retiring. Or, yeah. Or already had retired. Uh, yeah. Ways, but, you and, know, ways and means. Uh, yeah. He he left. Um, uh, as far as the building department. Uh, uh, I think you have one with one vacant. Uh, no, as far as the electric, uh, yeah. to get back to the wiring uh, inspector. Yeah. Um, now, you, uh, Lenny's a, he's a he's part time. Part time, yeah. So, would he stay part time? And, and would you ha would you? Well, uh, it's well, we we, we got we got two or three different type options we're going to try to use. We, I'd like to have a full time inspector there all day, and. Probably a part-time inspector, like a, a pro that's what we need because we, we're getting killed on calls and uh, we, you know, and it, if we don't have an adequate uh, support to you know to do the inspections, then it, it just doesn't make the department look good. It doesn't make the whole city look good, and you know everybody's calling. You know we, they need this inspected. All the construction going on in the city, and these solar uh, companies come in, and uh, it's, it's just uh, it's a nightmare. That's really over the last. 
three years, that's increased tremendously. So uh, we always had a, a full-time inspector. Um, we dropped it down to a part-time inspector when we uh, years ago, and, uh, and then you know sort of the economy went south at that time, and now with all the building going on in the city and uh, all these solar things, uh, I think it's really we need probably an inspector and a half in that position. But the problem is that uh, getting somebody is really difficult because everybody's working and making you know all these electricians are making. And plumbers are making tons of money because the construction trades are so, uh, you know, uh, so doing well, I should say. Yeah. So uh, my suggestion to you, uh, uh, to the mayor, is uh, you should probably maybe put in the budget for a full-time position and also uh, uh, leave the part-time uh, part position there. Um, I, I agree with you. I mean, I'd vote for that. Yeah. I would definitely vote for that. Uh, let's see, yeah, vacant. Yeah, he's got basically, they got uh, 0.062 hours. That's what Lenny would be working if you look on the last page there. And then is the vacant part is like a, a part time, probably under, under uh, 0.38 is. You know, probably uh, 16 hours or 17 hours, but um, that's something we can tweak, uh, you know, and work on. Uh, we got the jobs posted, but nobody's applied. Yet. Yeah, we haven't had anybody apply for it yet. So, so. The total figure of the um, of the. Uh, that position in the assistant position should be in the budget. That's right. what I'm trying to stress. Yeah. The, you know, the, the problem is you need a master electrician. You can't just have a you know, journeyman. You need a master with all the uh, jobs and, you know, the uh, high-tech uh, wiring being done and all these buildings and stuff. You can't, can't have a journeyman. Uh, so you need a, a master electrician. So that's, again, a problem. Uh, so uh, the mayor's been trying to work out a figure on maybe we should up the... Uh, the uh, the price on how, how we pay somebody to try to get somebody in, um, but um, we're, still, we're still we're still working on that. So okay. that's something we can uh, sort of revisit. Just a suggestion. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, it's I'm, a good I'm, one. I totally and, agree with you. you need yeah, both. no, yeah. the mayor, he's well aware of it. So you know, and he's been working on it. You know, so uh, that's it, Mr. Chairman. I uh, thank you, Councilor really Patch, Councilor Novoselsky. Yeah. Uh, Nick, I just have uh, uh, an observation and uh, a question. Uh, if there is so much uh, building going on out there and so much work for uh, electricians, uh, maybe shouldn't our revenue from electrical permits be increasing, thereby allowing us that extra money to uh, perhaps hire an uh, Full-time. Are, are you talking work? about increasing the fees no, for electrical saying, permits? Is that all the work that's going on out there? Yeah. So there must be a lot of permitting. There is. So there must be a lot of revenue coming in from yeah. that permitting. Yeah. And maybe that could go toward uh, hiring a, a full-time electrical inspector. Because I, I agree with you. That's something you need. Yeah. Particularly after incidents like, you know, the fire the other night, things like that. Yeah. Well, the trades, like I said, the trades have increased, uh, you know, even even the building department. They, these With uh, the safe housing task force we have with the illegal apartments and legal rooming houses, that's take, taken up a tremendous amount of time. Something that we have to do because it's a problem. It's a huge problem in the city right now. So okay. it's a big, huge problem in every city, but I think we address it more than most cities, which is a good thing. And, you know, we have a really good task force, but it takes up a tremendous amount of time of our building department and, you know, and, you know, the group. So, and plus they got to do their inspections on buildings. Now, so. You're the, you're the director of inspectional services. I were. I am. You are. Okay. Yes. You haven't retired yet. I, I have retired. Oh, well, my question is, you know, the money's in there for your salary. That, but, that's correct. But. You're going to be working a couple of days a I'm week. I'm being paid out of that, that salary, yes. Right. That was my question. That's correct. Okay. Until they hire somebody. Okay. At yes. That, and at that point, what happens then? 
your guess is as good as mine. I okay. might be sitting in my backyard. All right, and I noticed the other uh, uh, item that's not here is a food inspector. Food inspector is, like I said, that's going to be, uh, we're going to, we have to post it because it's a union job. And um, not, we have somebody in the office that's qualified, but it's, it's we have to funded. go through the union. It's not funded in the budget. It's, well. It's funded in FY17, okay. but not 18. Hold on a minute. Uh, let me just take a look. Just give me one second, John. Get somebody. It's on page ninety-nine. No, I know. I I got it. Um, it's in there, 56,932. Chief Health Inspector. No, I'm referring to Food Inspector. It was originally funded last year at 51,593. And uh, there's no amounts in there for FY18. Well, it doesn't actually, it just says Chief Health Inspector. That is the Food Inspector. Oh, see, that's something we don't know. Well, I, right. no, okay. Well, that's, that's how they worded it this year. You, okay. You're probably right. All right. So, but that, that's Tony. He is the Food Inspector, and that is funded at that particular price that I just All mentioned. Right. All right. Ira, you had some questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Nick, um, yeah. I can't give you any more kudos for your department that I've been going through in the last 16 years. Thank you. You know, you guys are very receptive and uh, responsive, and they, they really uh, do their job. You know, I'm not going to pick anyone specific. It's just the whole team. Thank they you. They work well as a team. Thank you. And I'm sorry to see you go full-time, and I'm sorry to see Tony go, <laughs> yeah. uh, go part-time even. Old but, school. Yeah. Um, that's true. Uh, First of all, I want to talk about the rodent control. Sure. Now, you mentioned about putting more money into it. Don't we use the money from the dumpster money? Yeah, but, okay, so the, the permitting off of the dumpsters, uh, uh, counselor, is uh, probably about $11,600. So we do use that, and it's, okay. like I said, it's inadequate. It's not yeah. enough money. Is that the only thing we use that for? Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. Well, just to explain, to explain to you, each time we go out, we're one of the few cities that actually baits people, uh, bait people's properties. Uh, if we find a problem, we send an inspector by, you see a burrow in their yard, we'll do it. If we don't see it, we won't have it baited. It, it, it runs between 160 to $220 just for one bait box and the, the rodent company going out. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is on the homeowner. And we only do that once for them. Yeah, because we're, we... With a waiver. Uh, they have to sign a waiver. They have to sign a waiver. Right. Yeah, we, you know, that protects the city for right. domestic animals if something happened. You know, so we make them sign a waiver. Yes. What does it usually cost for a uh, for a follow up from the? For uh, the follow up uh, is not expensive because what happens is uh, uh, on rotor control, the bait boxes, the rotor goes into the bait box, eats the bait, goes back to the burrow and dies. So when they go out to inspect the bait boxes, uh, if the bait has been eating, and if it's a, I say it's an active area. And they might have to go out two or three times to rebate the boxes. And once they see the bait is still in the bait box, that means that. And to answer your question, so it's you. probably between forty and fifty dollars. Yeah. yeah. I actually, my guys came the other day and they actually found one in the bait box. They found. Yeah. They he wrote, must have liked what he was box. eating. Yeah. <laughs> he was hungry. <laughs> how I much did they charge? How much <laughs> did they charge? You may ask. I'm just uh, curious. Between thirty-five. Yeah, and 50. that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know what, how they guide it, but that's, yeah. that's their issue. But yeah. it's just something we have to do. Uh, I, I know how they die, but I ain't going to explain yeah. that. No, yeah, I understand. So. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not looking for that. But, you know, that was just my question. Sure. On, uh, 
So, like I said, the mayor. People understand that, that we do assist them on the initial yes. baiting. Yes. Yes. We do. One box. Normally one box. Two, yeah. One box. one box. Yeah. One box. If they want to add boxes when the person's out there, the the the, the cost is for the the uh, technician going out there. They got to pay him, and then the baiting of the box. You know. So if they add a box, it'll probably be thirty or forty. Another box, yeah. thirty or forty dollars. You know. Yeah. So, but uh, at least we try to assist them. Mm. And, and, and just, just to say one more thing that I think one of the big things is, is when we do sewer mitigation work, uh, I, I went to a lot of meetings on this, and a lot of towns, uh, Boston, city of Boston, they bait their sewer lines, and Donnie might be able to tell you more about that when he comes up there. Yeah. And I talked to him about uh, uh, DPW director, and he agreed that maybe that's something we should look into uh, in, in the future when we sure. start doing Absolutely. mitigation on sewerage. Yeah. You're definitely no. uh, disrupting, yeah. disturbing yes. them now. Yes, you know, yeah, down there. right, yeah. that's their home. Right. So. Um, the other issue I want to take up is uh, base, uh, salary bases and other appropriations on the, on the list we have. I know it's like some people have a base salary, some are the same, but the other appropriation salary column is different. Yes. Yeah, some of that uh, could be uh, longevity. Uh, some of that could be for degrees various degrees that they have. Some of them uh, could be for, uh, let's say, hy hypothetically, the uh, building inspectors, when they get their certifications, if you get all your th three certifications, uh, that you're entitled to more money. Uh, the plumbing inspector, if you're a master plumber, you get more money. I think it's, I don't know if it's 3.5%. Uh, I think it's 3.5% more. Uh, and if you're a master electrician, you get 3.5% also. So that, that's what all those columns are, Ira. Would, I know they're... Yeah. Would the, you know, on the base salaries, why wouldn't it in, increase from 17 to 18? Isn't... Uh, because the longevity increases? No, just on the base salary. Oh, on the, the base. Yeah. Uh, some of them are the same in 17 and some of them are the same in 18. Uh, okay. Uh, give me an example. Which one? Uh, the local inspector. Um, and also the uh, plumbing inspector. Yeah, the pl uh, okay, the plumbing inspector's uh, salary uh, uh, did increase because he was in some sort of mitigation uh, because of the backflow. Uh, he wasn't being paid for the backflow, his backflow, uh, backflow, so they increased his salary because of that. Okay, but the base hasn't increased. It has increased. Has not. Has not, that's correct. Has not increased. Okay, you're talking about the plumbing inspector now? That's one, you know, but the other oh. one is one of the local inspectors. Actually, both the local inspectors. Okay, let me take a look. It's on page 96, yep. if you have the page numbers. Uh, yeah, I don't have pages here. I just okay. have... Okay. It's um, in uh, group two. Yeah, mock lock. <clears throat> Okay. I, I don't know. You know two th okay, so basically, well, I'm looking at, well, well, my sheet, I don't know, yeah, you might, I, you might have a different sheet, but my sheet says it went from 68,000, I'm talking about the plumbing inspector, Mark Locke right now, 68,854 okay. to 70,677. Okay, so, okay, I was looking at the... Uh, yeah, you were looking at the FY217, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So they, they... Yeah. So that's the recommended total. Well, that's the recommended total for the mayor. Right. But that, that's only base, his still base salary is still the same. It's still an increase of $1,823. It's, I don't, you know, it could be a, a state, I'd have to look into that. Yeah. I, that middle, mine's a little, I think my sheet is a little different than yours, but I can certainly find out that information and get back to you. Yeah, actually, when I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, building inspector, same thing, the base salary is the same. The only thing that changed was other appropriations salary. Okay. So I, you know, just no, no, no. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get you an answer on that. You know, okay. That, that was. I see 17. what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you asked for a recommendation, um, which the mayor reduced. Yes. Based on the total, not on his base salary. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just curious. You know, okay. I see it. No. You know, and. I'll let you know. I, I, you know, I, I just thought everybody would be getting some kind of cost of living increase. Well, the, we're in, right now the uh, we're in the union negotiation still. Uh, we're out like a year and a half now, and we are presently uh, haven't. Uh, I think uh, 
some of the departments. I think DPW and I, I believe fire uh, have and settled. All, we have not. And these folks are under the union? They, they're all under the union, so yes. That, okay. Yeah, they're all under the union. Okay. Yes, local so that, 22. That'll probably be retro. Later so we haven't, years, yeah. we, haven't, uh, we haven't negotiated yet. We are in presently negotiating okay. now, I should say. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank, thank you, Councilor. Sure. Sure. Did you have another question, Charlie? Uh, yes, thanks for letting me uh, speak again, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, just, I just got a couple of questions. Uh, there was two more code enforcers uh, hired uh, last year. Or this year? Uh, last year. Okay, so here's what, uh, I'll, I'll explain that to you. Um, we, uh, the housing inspector, which was John Ferrara, moved into the Weights and Measures position, which was Bobby Cronin's position right. at Weights and Measures. Rick LaCentra was hired as the housing inspector. He was hired last year. Michael Wells was hired as a sanitation inspector. Yes. So we had two new hires last year. Uh, we didn't replace those. We replaced those positions. Right. So um, there's, one we didn't add. there's one vacant that says it's been moved. Um, 51,000 uh, oh, 55,000. Okay. We'll take a look. Um, You're talking on health now? Uh, code enspecting. Uh, health, health. Health, health inspector. Health inspector. OK. Let me just take a look. So right now, uh, code enforcement, we have uh, three outside sanitation inspectors, uh, two full-time, one part-time. We have we, one we food, have, excuse yeah, me. I'm sorry, uh, Nick. Uh, but where was that? It says it was moved, that money. Where was it moved to? Um, that's OK. I, I don't know where you're looking right now. Well, right under code enforcement, it says vacant, moved, uh, moved, 55,000. Um, personnel, yeah. I, I, you're probably looking at something different than I'm looking at. Well, it, it, the first one, the first person is you. Uh, yeah, director, director inspector. And then it goes down, chief, chief inspector, health inspector. And then on, on the code, code enforcement, which yeah. retired. Yeah. Um, but then the next one, code enforcement, where, I would, where Rob is, uh, Wells, and the, uh, right there, it says move, vacant, moved. Yes, pay, please pay the source from the source behind it. Right under, uh, bo yeah, bo Rob's name. There. Okay, let me look. Okay, so we got vacant, right, uh, moved. I'm not too sure what that means. I'd have to, to check on that. Right. I don't know what that means. And, uh, but all those people, like I said, Michael Wells is a sanitation inspector. Rob's a sanitation inspector. Frank Scafani's part-time uh, sanitation inspector, 20 hours a week. And uh, uh, Rick LaCentra is the housing inspector. <clears throat> right. And they all do a fine job. Thank you. But, uh, Thank you. Um, I, I just got another question there because I, I didn't know we were doing the uh, community uh, health commu community, health initiatives? community initiatives. Okay, let me get um, they do an unbelievable job, this group, um, and I'm glad to see. I know they were getting paid by grant, um, so now they're in their uh, their salary. Well, are they still on the grants? Uh, basically, we have two different groups uh, that we work with: healthy communities, um, which um, healthy communities, which is. Uh, I'm talking about the whole list. Okay. that's there. And. You're talking about substance, uh, substance uh, use? No, the, health, uh, um, the healthy community uh, manager, the neighborhood organizer, the active living coordinator, uh, HCI clerk, all of them were, I believe, were, well, except for the, I don't know about the health, the clerk, uh, HCI clerk. But the other three, I know, were on grants. Right. Um, and now they're all, it, it's showing a salary. Yes. So. Well. I can, okay, we can explain that. Uh, basically, uh, a lot not of the that I don't, I'm glad that oh, they, okay. they do a great job. I'm yeah. not yeah. doubting their work. Sure. Um, 
but the uh, and that at that particular department, a lot of the grants have uh, dried up in that department, and the the mayor uh, that like you just said, they do a great job that he decided to uh, fund uh, those departments. Uh, I think there's uh, one of the, that department is and they have one grant left, and I think it's uh, Dimple. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is about forty thousand dollars left in that particular. Uh, that's why you see the salaries are like. The grants are not shown on these sheets, uh, but they have any, if you'd like to look at any of the grants, which are no, left, I just, they I, have them. I, you know, I just like an ex explanation. Sure. I, I, that, I know and that's it, was it. A, yeah. A grant, now it's, uh, right. rightfully so, it's going to be, um, they're keeping them and it's going to be a, a, yes. a salary. So that's correct. That, that, okay, that's, uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Any other counselors have any other questions uh, regarding the... Uh, Inspectional Services, Health, and our Building Department. That's it, Nick. Okay. Uh, Ira, I'll try to get that answer for you on that. Okay? All right. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. I appreciate your uh, time. Public Works. What, what paid? Okay. We're good. You've got stripes going that way, she's going to go on this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. Thank you. Madam Superintendent, would you care to come up? We'll take you. Yeah. We we don't have a copy of the school department budget. Uh, you do? No. I, not by not by position, certainly. Maybe I, perhaps you could give us an overview sure. of your department. Sure thing. I can give you an overview. So I'll start by saying, uh, I, which I know that you all know, um, the school department is largely funded by the state. Over two-thirds of our budget comes through Chapter 70 state aid, and one-third of our budget comes from the city, which, of course, we're very thankful to have. And for fiscal 18, um, our total budget is just over $91 million. 31 million of that will come from the state and 60 million, uh, sorry, 31 million will come from the city and 60 million will come from the state. Uh, and when we do the chargebacks between the city and the school department for shared services such as student transportation, snow removal, things like that, um, there's actually a net chargeback of negative $12 million where the city uh, has that money uh, allocated because of the services that the city provides to the school department. And that gives us a total appropriated budget of just over $80 million. Um, As you know, we've been struggling both this year and last year with the change in the definition of poverty at the state level, which has um, put us in a difficult position in the school department where we just have enough money um, to make through what our payroll and with the staff and salaries and allocations for student tuitions and other pieces of that go. For our salary accounts, um, we spend just over one and a half million on district administration. The largest chunk of money, 46 million, goes to curriculum and instruction that pays for our teachers, um, all, all of our special education services, occupational therapists, physical therapists, etc. We have three million in supplemental student services. About two million goes into facilities and maintenance. Just under a million in employee benefits and um, a very small portion goes to community programs. And that is the piece of the community school which we share with the city uh, that the school department pays a piece of and the city pays the rest of. What I, how, how much was your budget increased over last year and, and what portion of that increase uh, comes from the city? So our total budget increase was only about, and we're still waiting for final numbers to come out from the Senate. As you know, they are in conference committee right now. But the latest numbers we have is that we're going to have a $3.2 million increase over last year um, for the school department budget. 
and the portion that comes from the city, the portion of that 3.2 million would be just over a million dollars. Thank you. Uh, um, I can mention, if, I, if you wanted me to give you just an update on staffing, um, last year when we had the first round of financial crisis due to the change in definition of poverty, we had 17 teaching positions that we were not able to fill. Um, this year with the $3.8 million increase, we're looking to replace a total of 18 teaching positions. So we're actually going to be back to where we were last year plus one. So in effect, over the last two years, we will have only hired one additional teacher um, in terms of total numbers. And that's challenging because over the last two years, we have over 500 additional students in the district. So with 500 new students, we really should be looking at plus 20 teachers in our roles. And we're only looking at a total change over the last two years of plus one. And that's because of the increases in fixed costs and the cost of tuition now for special needs students and um, money that goes out to charter schools eats the bulk of the $3.2 million increase that we saw. So really very little of that money is actually visited on our students. Um, we were able to also put some other new positions in that were not uh, teaching positions, but which were also cut last year. So uh, that includes six, six positions, two of which were technology positions. One was the director of guidance. We survived this past school year with no director of guidance, and Jonathan Mitchell, who's the deputy principal at the high school, actually took over those responsibilities. But we realize it's in the best interest of students to have somebody in that role guiding them on a full-time basis into their college and career readiness. We are increasing the staff in our heart department by one. That's the department that focuses on working with um, our homeless students, kids who have chronic absenteeism, um, and kids who have court involvement. Uh, and the number of kids in those areas have increased as well, which is why we felt the need to increase those positions by one. We're also increasing the number of paraprofessionals who support our special needs classrooms by three. Um, so I guess that's, that's a pretty good summary of the budget. I don't know if yet there were specific questions. That, that, that $2 million increase that isn't picked up by the city, that's Chapter 70 money? That's right. Okay. Yep. Any councilors have any questions? Councilor Hass. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would gov the governor's plan to reduce yeah, right. education, how are we going to administer that if he does make an additional cut to education? Uh, if there were to be additional cuts to education, then we'd really have to think about um, how we move forward with the school district. Um, We've been very diligent this past year in saving every penny that we could. All of the, I have to say, all of the principals, all of the curriculum directors, everybody who manages different funding accounts for the school department has been very diligent about only spending money that they absolutely had to. So we do have a little uh, money in our carry forward account that if we were to see a couple hundred thousand dollar cut from the governor's budget, um, we would be able to apply those funds and be able to work through anything beyond that. We'd have to start thinking about cutting some of these positions that we just spent all the time adding back adding in. Adding back in, yeah. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hass. Any other questions? No. I don't have any other questions. I mean, I think you've given us a pretty good overview of the uh, school department. Uh, I just I do have one question. Where are we now with uh, respect in the different uh, elementary schools with respect to classroom size? So uh, we were able to, some of the new positions that we put on this year are intended to combat classroom size issues, particularly at the Hill School. Um, the two schools where we've seen the, the most significant challenges are Hill and Paul Revere. And we were able to introduce new staff through this FY18 budget that would alleviate that situation at the Hill. The challenge we have at the Paul Revere School is that there is no space um, to allow for another classroom teacher that could reduce the overall class size at um, the grade level that is really tight, and that's going to be grade five next year. The little bit of good news is that overall enrollment at the Paul Revere School is down. 
So we feel like it, when we get through this hurdle of this one particularly large class, um, the other class sizes are, are reasonable, and we are hoping that that trend is going to start to continue for the next few years until, um, you know, hopefully we can have a larger, broader school plan put in place that involves the creation of a new high school, um, the use of the new high school as a central middle school, and then the reallocation of some middle schools as elementary schools to alleviate the stress across the whole system. But I think that would probably help tremendously if we could do that. It, it would be fantastic. We need high school first, though, right? That's right. And uh, our application is in with the MSBA uh, for the core program. As you know, with, we, we applied last year with your support, which we were very thankful for, uh, but we were not invited in. And so they did, they did um, applaud us for the strength of our application, but they, like everybody else, are, are suffering with the same monetary financial issues at the state level and didn't have the funding for as many projects as they typically did. Uh, so, but we did reapply with their urging, and we should hear in late fall or early winter uh, as to where we stand with the new application. Thank you very much, Madam Superintendent. Oh, Councilor Novoselsky. Thank you, uh, Doctor. Um, Regarding the maintenance costs, mm -hmm. does the, uh, uh, the school department put the cost of electricity for all the buildings in their budget? We do, yes. Yep. We do. Mm -hmm. okay, so all of our utilities are paid through our budget. Yep. They are. Okay. Um, and we talked about the maybe new high school? Hopefully. Yeah. Now, did we have, you know, I know the Paul Revere is small. Mm-hmm. Do we ever consider looking at adding on to it? Um, I know that when that school was originally built, they were talking at the time during design <clears throat> phase about having another level on the school. Um, they desired, decided not to do that. And I, to be honest with you, I would need to look in the, into the structural feasibility of whether or not that's a possibility. <clears throat> I don't know that they built out foundations that would support an additional story on that structure. Um, but, you know, it's certainly something that if Plan A doesn't go through that we would need to look at. I, w I would even consider or uh, suggest you looking into actually not necessarily going up, but going out over that play area where we have the steps that we have our names mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Expanding a couple floors over that with um, pylons and mm. doing an L-shaped building if we had to and look into that If we that had way. to, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. Yeah. The one thing that's really great, so I know, the one thing that's great about working with MSBA is any project that we do through them, they assign us um, architects and engineers who will do a feasibility yeah. study. And so they can come <laughs> out and tell us, here's a viable option, this is not a viable option, you know, which is great that they centralize that expertise so that all school districts across the state mm -hmm. are trying to contract individually for that kind of work. Yeah, well, so. being in the, in the construction business for the time that I had it, you know, that would be a thought in my mind to ex, you know, expand on and try right. and look into yeah, absolutely. doing an L-shaped building and do something with that. Because, you know, I, I go down there and, you know, you know, Barbara Kelly does an outstanding job down there. And I know sure all does. the teachers do. And Terry does a great job. Terry Inserto does a great yeah. job with the, with the veteran thing with the kids and yeah. you know it's just I love going down there I just feel badly that you know they don't have the same type of facility as some of the other schools do. Mm -hmm. so I would look in, into potentially expanding somehow sure thing. and help yeah. them out yeah thank you all right just for the record when they built the Parkville school I had made a recommendation uh, to the building committee that the, it be built with the possibility of expanding up uh, uh, another floor, and I don't, I don't know whatever oh. happened with that. But I'll have to. I hope yeah, they took yeah. your advice, but that I would hope, be great I if hope they so. did. Yeah. But I did make that recommendation. That's thank great. You. Thank you, Doctor. Thank Kelly. you all very much, and thank you as always for your support for the school department. It really makes a huge difference in our success. Thank you. Donnie, excuse me, do you, do you mind if we take uh, this gentleman? His department. <laughs> We're going to beat you up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I, I, th this really shouldn't take long. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Tony, for allowing me to go. I have a relatively straightforward and much simpler budget than uh, what Donnie has to deal with. And uh, just briefly to summarize, um, of the appropriated positions in the uh, Strategic Planning and Economic Development Department, there are only two other than the Planning Board itself, myself and Frank Stringy. Um, there will be essentially uh, no increase in salary with the exception of Frank himself. As you know, Frank is semi-retired. His income is capped by virtue of his retirement agreement. So last year, Frank, who works two days a week, was compensated at the level of 30000 which was an absolute steal. Uh, next year, his allowance will go up to forty-five, which is still the best bargain uh, in the building. So our budget uh, this year is actually notwithstanding uh, the increase for Frank, $30,000 less than the budget for last year and about 15000 more than our actual spending last year. So it, it remains a fairly uh, lean budget. Uh, four of our positions are funded from uh, grants. Um, those uh, commitments in 40 in 2018 will also be going down because uh, uh, Bill Ash has recently announced his retirement. Fortunately, he will be doing essentially what Frank did, continuing to work on a 40 to 50 percent basis, uh, making him a wonderful bargain. Uh, but our overall spending out of grant funds, which in total exceed $8 million, is about $240,000 for four positions next year. So in both appropriated and grant positions, I think we're reasonably efficient and fairly straightforward. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. And as far as the grants, that's something that historically, I believe, went back to Mayor Colella and possibly Mayor Reinstein with regard to funding that department through grants for the most Indeed. part. Indeed, yeah. And some of the grants do not allow for staffing. Yeah. Others do. Um, but in, in total, they exceed more than $8 million, CDBG, MassWorks, uh, INI funds, and so forth. Uh, so it's uh, a relatively good balance. Out of that, 240000 is committed to uh, fairly significant staffing functions. So. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, counselors? Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's only, there's only three of you. Counsel? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bob, I, you know, on the sheets that we have, I guess last year they kind of did a reorg? Mm, somewhat, yeah. Uh, I mean, last year was my first year. Because there, there were names assigned to one side and there are no names aside to the where the grant money comes through the deputy director housing intake and economic development it shows a position but there's no numbers next to it uh well i i do have those numbers in total they're two hundred and forty thousand for fiscal year 18. they were about a hundred thousand dollars more than that in fiscal year 17. i can provide you with the detail if you need need it so we don't we don't have people going into those positions yet. No, they're already staffed. They were staffed before my time, and they continue to be staffed. Okay, so they they move those other people over. Nope. Correct. No, nope. Bill Bill retired or is retiring. Bill w is uh, semi-retiring right. as of July. So he's 1st. coming back part time, like you said. He comes back okay. part time. He, he and, actually, uh, I mean, Bill has been here, I think, forty years, but technically, you have to retire and then come back as a new employee. Right, and John so, Squibb. Uh, it's John Squibb, uh, Bill Ash, John Festa, and Tyler Ash. No, John. John Stayin, or is John Stayin? Yes. He is Stayin. Okay. Um, I must have. It must be on the other sheets that we got. I had the old book. Yeah, that's so. possible. I don't know in the official sheets whether their individual sh salaries are shown. Uh, I do have that information and can provide it to you if you wish, but. As I say, it's a total of 240000 for the four positions that will be staffed next year. I, Same I people. I believe it's not shown because it's not part of our budget. It's not, a, it's not appropriated. Yes, no. correct. Councilor Hess. Is that because some of it is funded through grants? It's all for that reason, Bob, yes. Okay, because yes. I'm looking at the budget here in 
couple of people you just mentioned, you know, John Squibb, John Fessett, so they're all zeroed out here. They're all funded from outside sources, non-appropriated okay. funds. Can we get a copy of those uh, outside grants? Uh, yes. Not individually, uh, but find yeah. out which yeah. individual is making what money from them. Sure, by Thank all you. means. Yeah. I'll provide those through the chairman. Any other questions? Well, that's okay. The, uh, well, yeah, yours is a very, very small budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and again, thank you, Donnie. I appreciate not having to go after you. Much more complicated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Donald Goodwin, uh, Superintendent of Public Works, uh, City of Revere. Uh, as you know, uh, our department is made up of two divisions. Uh, one side of the, the house is the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund, and the other side uh, is DPW General. DPW General is composed of uh, parks, sanitation, highway, um, the, sh the shop, water sewer billing, um, and the other side of the house is, uh, is um, water sewer and drain. Uh, this past year has been uh, kind of a fruitful year for us. Uh, we've made a lot of progress in the feasibility study as to a new facility down at, uh, on Charger Street. And uh, due to uh, the help from the council this past year, we've been able to appropriate $1.3 million of purchasing of new equipment that will start starting to roll in in the next month or so. Um, so at this time, I'm here to answer any questions that the council may have. Donnie, one of those pieces of equipment, isn't that a new hot box too? Yes. So that will give us the uh, yes. next, accessibility next. to doing more potholes in the, in the months coming Yes, ahead. John. Uh, that will actually enable us to double up on our effort because uh, other than, you know, major thoroughfares, but for most of the side streets and secondary roads, it, it only requires two people to go out and do uh, potholes. Obviously, you know, that crew is made up of four, so we'll be able to uh, uh, double, up. double up on what we're doing. So at this time next year, uh, we should have double the effort on repairing the numerous potholes that are presently out there and that obviously will come in the future. That's good news because I think that's one of the, um, I know the prime complaints that I have is that, you know, we just didn't have the manpower to go out and do the uh, necessary uh, work that we needed to do in a timely fashion. So this will help us tremendously. And y yes, it will, Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, Councilor Hass. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. How many people do you currently have working in your DPW uh, in its entirety? 27, if you, you know, take the, everybody that's down there, because there are some people that are, that are out. Uh, and you, that does include, like, myself and Elaine and people right. like that. Uh, what are the plans to increase the work? At, it, as you see in here, um, we do have six available uh, slots that are open on the, on the water sewer billing side. Uh, my understanding is after the effort to be made to get the equipment, that as of January, those positions will be full, uh, filled in full. Uh, we just had a, a lengthy discussion with the mayor and his staff this past week, and they're moving expeditiously in that manner to, uh, to fill those spots. Have they been ordered already? The equipment? The, all the equipment has been ordered. Um, like I said, some of the material is going to be coming in pretty rapidly. We will start seeing some of the smallest of the hot box would be the first uh, thing that actually comes in. Uh, some of the major equipment, like the crane truck and the utility truck that requires uh, for the water department, could take upwards of nine to ten months to arrive. On, on, at, so at we're ahead of the game there, right there. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one other question uh, I have is during a fire we just had, yes. people complained about the lack of pressure in the hydrants. Can you explain that? Well, it, it's a twofold type of a problem. I, I was at jury duty uh, during the, the day that the fire took place, and uh, upon leaving jury duty, I got calls saying that, you know, there was, uh, I guess, three complaints about three separate hydrants that were experiencing some difficulty. Uh, 
after talking to my staff and talking to the chief, this is just an example of what, what happened to the Massport truck was having a difficult time getting pressure. This here was found inside their strainer. It probably did come from our distribution system. This thing is probably in 30 to 40 years old. It looks like some type of old spacer that they used in some type of plumbing issue. So we do know that this here was absolutely the cause of what happened with the mask uh, port uh, vehicle. Uh, there were two other hydrants that uh, were problematic. Uh, my, my staff was called to, uh, to the fire uh, in the early morning hours, and upon their arrival, they were they were able to get the, the hydrants working. I understand there was a couple of problems with the caps, but there was water to the, the hydrants. So there, like I said, there's uh, where we, there's the Department of Public Works, the distribution side of it. So we did get water. There was water in the neighborhood. They did have a couple of problems with the caps on the hydrants. Uh, they couldn't get them up, but my my people were able to go there, oh, get the caps off relatively easily and uh, water was, re was, was then used to fight that fire. That brings up another issue. As far as the maintenance of the hydrants, you people maintain it, who checks it? That's I always been, thought the fire department did, but that was... Well, to be fair, we, you know, we do have a new fire chief and he's been in contact with me and we have made some discussions on what, how we can share certain things. Obviously, as part of the distribution system, we're responsible for repairing hydrants that we know are broken. Right. Now, as far as going out, and we do have Roca and some of the summer kids go out and paint, you know, a number of hydrants during the course of the year. But as far as going out, and there's roughly 900 hydrants throughout the city, and going after and taking the caps off and rotating them, uh, that that's that seemed to be the problem. It didn't seem to be. And, that I'm aware of, uh, unless, and like I said, I wasn't there yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to really sit down in detail with, uh, with Chief Bright yet, but Chief Bright and I had a, uh, a very good conversation today, and we are going to have a meeting next week with all the parties concerned to figure out uh, ex exactly what happened at, that, that, at those two hydrants that they couldn't get a cap off. Well, that's good because, the, you know, people hear this, that the fire hydrants are right. operational. No, they okay, they were operational. The there, there was an issue with getting the cap off of uh, one, uh, two hydrants. But the thing about uh, the hydrants is they have, uh, they have three ports on it. There's one five-inch port on the front, and there's two two-and-a-half ports on the side. So I guess... Uh, it, somebody made a determination when they couldn't get one of the caps open that it was out of service, but that just wasn't the case when they, when the gentleman from my uh, department got there and got the caps off, there was water to the hydrant. And one last question, what's the ultimate aim of the DPW facility itself? Well, obviously, uh, the building itself, as you know, is built for the telephone company. Uh, we really need to find out what the feasibility study is going to tell us. The, the, the building itself is not large enough for us. The site is really not large enough for us. Uh, the site is the actual perfect place for it to be. Uh, you know, it, it really is a great location. Um, we're looking at other avenues as to uh, whether we build a facility on another site or whether they're going to re restore the building that's presently there. I think we'll take all fa mitigating factors into consideration, you know, what the city can afford, you know, what they can build, and uh, what the cost will be for uh, land acquisition and building as opposed to either selling our land and building on our property. Uh, the best thing that for us would be to build the off-site so that we can utilize the facility we have now because if we can move into a facility after, you know, we need a place to stay while they're building this right. facility and it's going to take a year or two to, uh, to build a facility and, um, you know, it's not just moving trucks. It's, you know, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of technology for, for the computers and, you know, uh, we need to be able to fuel our tanks. So there's, there's, it's a big undertaking just to move <coughs> off of there. Yeah, so it, obviously the best case scenario would be, to be if in, in our area where we are, if we could appropriate another piece of land in that area that's a little bit bigger and 
now we can accommodate what we're doing now in the old garage and maybe there's some type of obviously we could probably sell that land when we're, when we're done to offset the cost of building it. those are some of the things we're looking at but we won't really have the total idea of where we're heading and where we're going until the feasibility study is done and completed um, I believe that feasibility study should be done within the next three to five weeks, and then we can sit down with uh, the Public Works Committee and to decide, you know, what's the best direction for the city, not only for the operation of the Public Works, but this is going to be a, a big financial commitment Absolutely. on behalf of the city, and that's something that has to be addressed as well. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. Donnie, I just have one question. Uh, oh, excuse me. Councilor Patch. I didn't... You win. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just got uh, a question on pertaining to the, uh, the caps on the fi uh, fire hydrants. Um, I know a lot of subcontractors have been doing work with those fire hydrants and, uh, and uh, without any uh, supervision from the, uh, the city. Uh, they were taken uh, over time was taken from them. Um, and uh, would you know if that area was uh, one of the areas that the subcontractors were, were working? We, we did have uh, a problem with one of the hydrants that was in that area earlier, but it was repaired, and they did utilize that uh, that hydrant during the during the fire. The the problem that we have is we we do tell our contractors to come in. There's street sweeping contracts, but it's not only us. It's the state. You know, if you're along that parkway, they're cleaning their drains and things as well. Uh, so we, there are contracts, and then private contractors who have nothing to do with the city are out there. You know, they they're stealing our water, and it's just a matter of you know, can you catch them? Can you? I don't think it's that you know pervasive, but it does happen. And the problem is once they you know what you really need to do it. I shouldn't really. You only need to put them on hand tight and give it a little snug so in the event that the fire department has to come, they don't have to muscle that thing to get it off. Because if somebody's going to take the time out to show up to a hydrant with a, with a wrench, there's no need to, to put so much pressure on it that they don't come off very easily. So this is part of the discussion that uh, Chief Wright and I had today, and we are going to develop a joint uh, task force to go out there and figure out, you know, how we can go out and service all these nine, uh, 900 uh, hydrants that are throughout the city. Uh, the, the, that hydrant in question that, that, that had the, the, the problem with the cap is, is quite old. And we, are, we do have a hydrant replacement program that we replace X amount of hydrants every year, but the number is, is large. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, we replace as many as we can in-house, and then we have a separate contract that goes out. But they, they're quite expensive. Just to buy the hydrant itself is in the thousands of dollars. And then when you factor in, you know, you, you, you're trying to replace 900 hydrants over a course of, you know, so many years. It's, uh, but we do pick away at it every year, and, the, and one of those hydrants just happened to be uh, quite old, uh, quite old that was being used. But as far as water in the system, the water was in the system, and the valve, once open and the caps were off, water was delivered to the system. Um, I only got one other question. I, um, we budgeted for, uh, uh, I don't know what the total uh, new high is for your department last budget. Uh, would you have that total? Uh, that was the same seven, six that I, six. I, that I, I, so I that spoke about previously. But that, uh, did they the, go for the whole year without? Well, the, I think the filled? intent the intent was, as you heard uh, Nick Cadenazzo uh, suggest earlier, that the intent I think was to hire somebody to take control of uh, just water and sewer, so that would alleviate me to do, you know, help with water and sewer, but also pay, you know, much more attention to what's going on at the DPW side. Uh, as Council Powell has alluded to, we have a, you know, pretty good. Uh, uh, pothole problem, sidewalk problem, tree problem. So there's a lot of things that need to be uh, to done. And from a managerial standpoint, you look at other cities and towns, the, the structure for public works is there, there's anywhere from three to five administrators that would administrate uh, a public works division, and presently we only have one. So it, it's, I think the intent of the mayor was to you know, ease the burden, become more productive, and, and make things move smoother. But 
during that hiring process, we really haven't been able to find anybody that sort of meets what we're doing. So I think that's the reason why they didn't, they didn't hire the people that was their intent. But after going through this exercise a couple of times now, uh, we've had a discussion with the mayor, and I think he is going to go forward and just hire it, uh, whoever the, uh, the workers are, so the guys with the shovels, as opposed to, need. yes. <clears throat> And, and that, that will help out greatly. That, and, and he's aware of it. Uh, I think their thought and, and it was well intended. He's only been there a year. And I, th I think from a uh, from management structure and standpoint, that made all the sense in the world to do that. It's just, uh, as, as Nick said, it, they can't fill their positions. It's, it's very difficult to fill positions like that these days. I know other cities and towns are having the same problem. They're actually hiring engineering firms to come in and actually run some of their uh, water departments or, or, or just outright privatizing. So, and that's not the intent here. And so we will be moving forward with those hires. Thank you. Any other councils? Please. Councilor Novoselsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, uh, Mr. Superintendent. Um, three or four categories I want to go over um, that I, I'm looking at. Um, I noticed that we're not doing hanging flowers this year. Yes. Okay. Um, but we're still putting in $59,850 into that uh, spraying and planting program. Well, we have, we have the tree program that we have that the state actually goes. We do have to go out and water and things like that. We do have people that we have to hire to go out and, and, and do. Oh, there's many, many trees they were doing. Uh, uh, Spraying, we, we've got you know, some mosquito control that we're using, uh, you know, efforts for and stuff like that. So there are, there are some needs uh, from the park and recreation side that that money is being utilized for. So we're basically still watering all the new trees that DCR is putting in? DCR, the ones we put in, we put all these new, uh, new trees, trees on yes. Broadway up and down. So we're so, still going to have the, so the we've, water we, machine. We've shifted away from... from Hanging plants. hanging plants to actual trees. Now, does that mean we're, we're not doing anything on the beach either? Uh, we contacted um, DCR, and we didn't get really any response from the mayor of, as to, uh, I think what we're looking at is, uh, and I spoke to the mayor about this, he's looking to put up banners uh, that can be on the beach, be on all the thoroughfares, and I think that money goes a long way to in, uh, broadening that program because though, once you buy the flowers and buy the, they're dead, they're gone. You know, you get them for three, four months. You can get the right. banners. The banners are, believe it or not, they're probably cheaper than the flowers. And mm -hmm. you can put, and you can, a banner will last you three to five years if you take them down and put them up properly, keep them clean. And now instead of just having them on Broadway, surely every Bay Street, we can, you know, like Baldwin Street, other avenues that we Beach, can, Beach we can, Mart. Beachmont, we can actually, show some pride in the city with a, a design banner that will include all the people right. of, uh, in all the various be, neighborhoods. That seems to be the uh, motif of a lot of cities and towns that I've been it is. going around to, it getting is. people to help advertise them. And, it, it's it's uh, not like the, the, we didn't like, you know, flowers, but it's becoming a very, very expensive proposition. The, the, the flowers are expensive. They only last a year, not even, you know, three to, three to four months. Yeah. And... Uh, you need to maintain them. Uh, you got to water them on weekends. Now you got, you got overtime, and it's just a, it's it's a lot of money to, to maintain. So those we don't have, we don't have to water anything on the beach. On the we we are doing the trees. The the, the guys still the, the new trees that trees on the beach. Some on of the them yes, and especially around uh, the uh, Maki Bridge. That uh, DCR considers you know, that, kind of they, own that yeah right. they don't uh, they don't want to have anything to do there and I think at some point we'll probably entertain a, a beautification uh, type of program for the entrance and exit from that right. from that bridge well, because so sure they have that like construction going on down right. there too so. right um, talking about trees and tree removal and tree trimming um, I know your numbers have gone down from 17 down to uh, up to from 18 from 17 to 18, we lost like five thousand dollars on the budget. That that is true, uh, Casa. We, uh, as you can see, this is a, a pretty lean budget. Uh, there were some issues that um, 
you know, there, there were a lot of things they were contractually obligated to do, is like trash and things, and the, the mayor obviously is probably trying to keep the overall budget within good, but, yeah, but if you look through this budget, there are level funded issues, there are increases in certain, uh, in certain areas, and that was one of the places that uh, we did have a 5% cut, but that's also one of the the accounts that we come back to the council year after year for a supplemental appropriation. Right. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that that will be the final, but there may be, uh, if it becomes necessary, that we would come before the council for uh, additional money if it's available through a supplemental appropriation at a later time. Yeah, I haven't seen the, uh, the money usage. I don't know what's left in the account. Um, I don't think there's not a lot of money left in the in the tree tree account at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year we added money to that that account to accommodate all the necessary uh, tree work that we did do. Uh, Thought they said ten thousand. Well, uh, presently, uh, if you look at for, for next year, we are down to five thousand. But we we have. It says year to year, fiscal year to date, we've spent 62 out of the 72, but that doesn't include the recent work that's been done. So I would say that uh, that account is virtually depleted, and there will be no encumbrances from that uh, from that comp from that account to carry over to next year. Yeah, because I don't see any uh, transfers on the last transfer right. list that we had for that. Uh, you know, one of the issues I have is. Um, on tree trimming just alone. I'm, you know, new trees I know we can get from DCR. They're doing pretty well with us. One um, of the, the new pieces of equipment that we did uh, purchase is going to be uh, a, a box for trimming. Where Right now, if you see when we go out and we do do some tree trimming in-house, we use a dump truck and the truck is up. It's really not the proper way to do some. So we're getting a box truck. Uh, that we can use as a dump truck uh, for other reasons. It's, so it's it's a multi-tax type of a truck. So we'll be able to send our chip to go out and, and start trimming some of these uh, smaller jobs that can well, can be done. I've been I've been looking for three or four years now to get trees trimmed along the hill streets because the street sweepers can't get up to the curb. Well, I, I agree, Ira, and, and, and the bigger problem yeah. for me is plowing. And so, and, it, and it's a citywide it's problem. It, right, right. It, so it's a citywide problem. That's why we addressed it with the new, uh, with the new appropriations uh, that you afforded us through new equipment account. Yeah. So that has been purchased. We have bought some saws, and we do plan on doing a lot more in-house trimming. None of the, you know, not the big. Uh, trees removal but it, no, for I'm the trimming looking, i'm just looking for basic trimming right. on the street so because that's the biggest complaint i'm getting from the neighbors and the people in the street that the, the street sweeper isn't getting up to the curb because it, the there are low, there the are some areas that i have I, I i agree with you the poor the poor guy from arrow he he, uh, he must lose three or four windshields maris hmm? we look maris that are well, bigger we well, the do way this the, right the way they're low you know mm -hmm. those yeah. uh branches so, are hitting the windshields so that, that was all part of our plan when we, we went forward with uh, buying the new equipment. Well, I hope I can see some uh, tree trimming in the near future. Like, you know, people are complaining to me. No, you know, no I, I, I'm hopefully we'll get that truck in early because, like I said, I, I look at it from a snow removal issue, and we need to get up against those curbs. And the city, as you know, I don't have to tell you, you live in one of those most congested areas. The closer you can get to the curb, the safer the people are. The streets are wider. Well, it has it, to do with the drivers, too. Well, if they can get to the curb, <laughs> <laughs> then, it'll, so, then we can't blame the trees. Okay. Um, going down to prisoners' crews, um, at the bottom of that list, it says God reels. Why would that be on the prisoners' that's, that's That's just historically... Uh, we put in $10,000 a year for, for, for miscellaneous guardrails here and there if uh, we need, if there is a need for an additional guardrail. But that's in there for, um, obviously, if you had an account that had lots of money for guardrails <laughs> in there, you guys would get inundated with guardrails. We, we get them, people want them on side streets. You know, they, you, guardrails are used in, usually at a, in a dangerous intersection or somewhere there. But 
today, uh, people being so safety conscious, they want them side streets here, there, anywhere they feel they may be unsafe. So the guardrails are there. We put it there so that when we know that we have a dangerous intersection or something gets hit and we uh, weren't able to get the police department to get us an insurance claim against it, that we can replace that guardrail. Yeah. Guardrail. <laughs> Where? Connor Shirley Avenue, North Shore Road. With, uh, right, he with the, the, protected with a, the light that Bella yeah, Fado we, we put tried in. the ball, it's there, it didn't work, you're right. You know, but, yeah. you know, no, we put it in, no, there are lights. Did. Yeah, they are. Those there are, are lights. lights. There, there, there may be a problem there with our eye, we were thinking about that, and, and the way to wrap that, uh, there's a lot of utility electrical underneath that sidewalk and things, so we, we really need to take my, a hard look at that. We may have to relocate well, some of the Well, that was my yeah. initial recommendation, yeah. and George said, well, why don't we do this for now? Because they right. had Dick Safe already do the right. marking to because move it back along the fence. I think the, if you had talked to George Belafato, he would tell you that, that it, that's a tight intersection, and there's no a lot question. Of, yeah, there's a lot of... Utilities, uh, signalization, electrical, fiber optic. There's a lot of utilities under the ground for us to be driving, you know, guardrail posts down through. We, you know, well, we, we this mean, is away from the street. You know, it's along the credit union fence. We, we, he marked it. Right. He marked it that way for the best spot to have it. I don't know why they didn't move it in the first place instead of trying to put the guardrail in. But, you know, that would be my next move is to request that it be removed the signal re pole. Relocated back. You'd have to, yeah, I, I did discuss that with him. You'd get up the longer mast that would come out to cover the intersection. Well, it's just, it's just a straight mast anyway, so. Well, if you push the signal down, that means you've got to come back up closer, so you do have to have a longer mast. You'd have to put it, definitely, you'd have to right. put like a five-foot mast on it, the length of a sidewalk At least. just to see it, yeah. At least, yeah. yeah. But, you know, that thing's getting hit five and six times a year. You're being generous, Council. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, the next item is street sweeping. Yep. Um, and you, you know my, my thing on that. Yep. Uh, and again, it's from the people that I hear. Uh, they, most of the complaints that they get are in the fall with the leaves. Because the street sweepers we have now are only the brush sweepers. And they make more of a mess when they go through in the fall when the leaves are on the ground trying to pick them up. And why not? Have our uh, whoever we have with the streets we use a vacuum machine rather than you know I know it's a little more money, but based on what I see and what the people are saying to me, a vacuum machine would solve a lot of problems. The the thing about and we when we have discussed this, Council you know, I sat down and talked about this a lot. The the, the difficulty with the vector is. Uh, the vector type thing, in any type of wet weather or matted material, it, it, it has a tendency not, not to pick it up. But as for, for leaves, yes. Um, as far as our future endeavors to uh, purchase a vector, maybe that's something we do because it would be a backup as opposed to being the frontline machine. Uh, the, the good thing that we, we have now is we, we just recently hired a mechanic and He's very, very good. I mean, he's got, he's got the sweeper back. You'll see that we uh, deducted some money out of the, the total sweeping account because he's got our sweeper back up and running. He's got a lot of equipment that's been sitting up, sitting around, back up and running. So we feel that he'll be able to maintain our current Pelican sweeper, and whether it's next year or the year after when we have another round of uh, purchasing for equipment, then the Vactor is on is on our radar screen and I have I have contacted a company and they will come down that time of year and demonstrate how it will work under those conditions yeah I, you so, know I've seen I've seen yeah. some cities and towns go around with a little one-man machine with the uh, with the hose hanging on the side and doing along the curb we, you know, we, we actually we, don't have we actually have one of them and we just didn't have enough personnel to get up because the leaves obviously no but going up and down like Broadway we did, it's got a snorkel, you can right. sit on the back of it, you ride it, it yeah. works. We did use it for a while, but you know, now it's 15, 16 years old and it's just, it's not running anymore, so. Yeah. But we we, but, we did utilize one of them on Broadway for I quite think, a few I years. I think the Vector uh, vacuum, even if it's, you know, from Arrow, just for those two, three months in the fall. Well, when the next, uh, 
contract comes up, maybe we, can, really, we can add know, that in as a, as a requirement to get the contract. It's not you don't need it full year, all year round. All you need is for those three months. And why should we buy a machine that we're only going to use for three months a year? And they may say the same thing. That but, why would they? But spend? they all have those machines. Well, some companies do. I, I think companies that do parking lots are more apt to have the vector type of uh, uh, sweeper than. Uh, say the people that work for uh, municipalities or the state agencies. If you look, uh, you know, DCR, Mass DOT, Citizen Towers, most of them have the Pelican sweepers because they're just, they, they do a, a better job under most of the, the circumstance. But when it comes to the leaves, I, I, I totally agree with you, yeah. So they, they, they can't compete. And the Pelican, the Pelican doesn't do bumpy streets. Not at least the back. <laughs> well, at least the back that picks up, you know, the paper. You know, it well, it can, and out. it leaves it, 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 it leaves and dirt and debris behind. The Correct. Pelican. Some of our streets, you, you know, are pretty bad, and with all the trenches, it goes straight across, and it doesn't pick up in the in the trenches. And people complain. That's what I hear. No, yeah, yeah. No, it's no. it's a valid point, Council. Um, and thank you for your uh, time, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I just got two more items. Uh, two more. Two more. Two more. Um, Culvert cleaning. Yes. Culvert cleaning has become a, a, a real problem for all municipalities. We just recently uh, found uh, we're trying to get a grant. Um, the biggest problem with, with culvert cleaning is not the actual cleaning of the culverts. The actual cleaning of the culverts is a very simple process. Uh, we have uh, a state agency that comes in and does it for us. They're the same ones that do the mowing. The problem with culvert cleaning today is that the uh, regulatory regulations have changed from the federal and the state government. Now, you're no longer, we used to side cast it, everything to the side, build up the banks and, um, you know, move on, keep the culverts flowing. Under the current law, you need to remove that material from the culvert and dispose of it. Well, the problem with the culverts is, is over the last 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, people, you know, not probably in the, in the recent time, but, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years, they used to pour their oil down the drain. Uh, you had the MBTA, uh, you had the utility companies with the PCB transformers that own yards and things along these things. So what we find is, and it happened to us at Wonderland, is we get into the uh, stuff, we went to take it to uh, any material that we did excavate. We used to just bring it to uh, to Resco, and they would burn. Well, they can't accept it any longer, and we got from the DEP and EPA. No, this has got to go to this landfill. The cost can range anywhere from a hundred to four hundred and sixty-five dollars a ton. So it's a very, very expensive proposition. And I'm of, you know, they'll say, well, the culverts belong to the city of Revere. It does, okay? And most of it, some of it has a little bit of DCI, a little bit of DOT, very minor. But the problem is they're utilizing our assets. As we utilize their assets for parking lots and our sewers run through their, uh, their parking lots, our water runs through their parking lots, our drainage runs through their parking lots. Well, they, they hit us with an assessment fee. So I have to pay state agencies because I have utilities on their property. Well, if they want to use our culverts, maybe we come up with a, a program that we've been talking, I've been talking about this with the mayor's staff, is it, how can we go about saying, okay, that's fine, but if you're going to utilize our culverts to rid yourself of your flood waters and drainage waters, the fee is, yeah, what a, what at least case. somewhat, well, it, it, yeah. it's, it's helpful, Ira, because I'm telling yeah. you, there's millions and millions of dollars Especially where you are down, know. you know, that creek behind there. How many oil spills did those tank farms have over there that's, that's in there? Forget seven I mean, 20, 30 years ago, that stuff used to catch fire when you yeah. put uh, when you put a how, match to it. How down are we there. making out with the T on that? Uh, actually, uh, the I was pretty excited today. I got, a, I got an email from a, a longtime uh, friend that I had at the, uh, the, uh, the, at the T. I haven't heard from him. Uh, it's all because of Speaker DeLeo. I just want people to know that. He put the pressure on, and I am going to talk. Uh, you may have spoken this because we've dealt with him before, Ira, did, you know, 15 years or so ago. Uh, Mr. DeFranzo, I don't know if you remember Dino, him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he seems to be able to make things happen. So he, right, he right. called me today. Oh, good. I'm going to get together with him probably next week 
uh, because they did come down and they did something, but I think they made it worse. Yeah. Because by the action that they took, I think they pushed more material up the pipe than they did clearing away from the front of the pipe because we can't get through it with our jet back. So. Because I, I remember a few, uh, about five, six years ago, we, they actually did the, put the grade all yes. and did that stretch from the bridge, the walk bridge, all the way down to... Uh, yeah, ten years ago, he, he actually yeah. did the entire length of it right, right. up in, uh, and it was on the midst of the Franzos, so the direction. Right. So, so I was very happy to hear from him personally yeah. today. You know, one, one more. And once again, you know, if yeah. it wasn't for the input of the mayor and uh, Speaker know. DeLeo, we'd, we'd been, be... I've been talking to the yes. Speaker's office okay. on a regular basis. Very good. The last item on materials as far as uh, replacing fencing. Uh, that is that is that where that would come out of replacement? Yes. Okay. The top of Hillside Ave. From the public stairs down to uh, about 141 Hillside. It's yeah, all we, rotted. We, the trees have fallen on it. Well, Hillside Ave has got two, two problems out of the upper end and then the lower end is, is the, uh, the fence is fairly new. And it's been, and it has a lot to do with snow removal issues. Uh, people parking on the sidewalk, they're hitting that fence. But uh, obviously, it, something needs to be done in, in that area because it is dangerous. Yeah, the stretch from, yeah. uh, from uh, 41 Hillside. All the way, yeah, up back, to the stairs. Back yeah. to the stairs. Yes. Yeah. You know, I put that request in you know, two years ago, yeah. and hopefully we can get, even if we do a piecemeal for now, I don't care. You know, we've just got to get those people some safety up there because someone's going to fall off that cliff. It's... I, I don't disagree that yeah. it's, it could, there could be an accident waiting. So I just want to bring that out front. And We're aware of it. Push yeah. it again. Yep. Mr. Chairman, thank take, you for your latitude. Thank you, Council. Uh, latitude, uh, I think that's hey, listen, a That's why we're here, to ask questions, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I know why we're here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let me Mr. do Mr. Chairman, that's why I came. Yeah. Do you know the water that comes on to Revere Beach Parkway because of the houses? Yes. What's, that's still wet. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Council Novoselsky and I have been dealing with this probably for two and a half to three years now. Why don't um, we go to the there, Legal Council? I, I think that uh, Ben de Cristoforo and I know that uh, Engineer Rice Room has been pretty harsh with this, uh, with this gentleman. Hopefully it's coming to a conclusion. I know they've been doing some work up there. Uh, it's 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 bad, yeah, especially I mean, in the winter time. It ices up. It's bad, and hopefully yeah. we we can eliminate that issue. The issue that I think is going to is going to happen there now. If he ties into the existing um, infrastructure that's in place there, we don't have any drop downs within within the pipe that's coming from up up top. That that infrastructure was only built for those condos way up on the highway. It wasn't made to accommodate that runoff coming down from off of Hopkins Street and off those hills in the back. Where that house was built and where that area is now, that was a percolation area that used to come down, and it came like this. As Councilor uh, Novoselsky would attest to, there's a lot of fill in that land up there now that was never there before. And so it looks like they've raised the elevation of that land about two to three feet. Right. And so now it's, it's, not really, it's be not really a sponge because it just soaks through and then comes out of the banks and comes flowing down, and it's from all directions. And under uh, you know, a couple of days worth of rain, the thing keeps draining out of the hill, out of the, because it, it acts like a sponge, but it's not going down. It just starts to leach out and it just comes down that driveway and it, it's, it's a problem. So, so you believe it's gonna be resolved shortly? It needs to be resolved before. You have all the answers. Be, 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 he, he, I, I've been on this. He really has. I have to give him credit. He's been on top of this one from, from day one. And we had a very serious accident up there this past winter during the last freeze up that we had. And it was a multi car pile up, and there was some uh, utility damages and telephone poles and things of that nature, Bob. So it's, it's not something that I know that the engineering department has taken lightly. I know Benny is starting to really see the seriousness of it oh, absolutely. and we're trying to uh, my thought is that at some point the city may have to do some additional infrastructure work at the bottom of the hill just to collect the volume of water that's coming down there well that was caused by the contractor right? well if i mean he diverted the water 
the he, he diverted the water, but the, the infrastructure that's presently there for him to tie into is not sufficient to handle the amount of runoff that he's created right. that was never there before. Right. Exactly. Thank you, Donnie. Mr. Chairman, just, if I may, just to fill in uh, Councilor Hass and, and the superintendent, uh, as of yesterday, they tied into that drain up top. They put in a French drain and ran it across the back of his property and actually tied it into that, that manhole at the top of the hill. So right now he's tied into it. Nobody has given him permission to do it, but he did okay. it anyway. Right. I haven't seen uh, what, I, what I'm looking to see, Ira, is how, what, what is going to happen with that debris that comes out of there and how it's going to affect right. that debris coming down yeah. right onto Hillside Avenue and clogging up those basins so that he eliminates the, property, the problem on his property, it but it then it creates down it down on, on Hillside Avenue. Yeah, so the, that, that's something that yeah. I'm very concerned about. Part, part two to that is that drain on the right-hand side of the building on the east side. He has just a, a roof drain coming down. Yeah. Yes. And that, that actually drains down across the street now. It, yeah. uh, it, he, I don't well, know if he put in a... I uh, had conversations with him. He's going to do some work on the street to actually collect it so that the, the water will go into that basin that's okay. in that corner before it crosses uh, Hillside Ave. So if, if, he, if he can accomplish that... Yeah. You know, so we that, may be halfway there for now, but we correct. don't know what the results are going to be down the road. I, I think what you're going to need is a very active maintenance program on that lower end to, to make sure that's flowing all the time because it's just not our system. That ties into the state system before it gets into the culvert. And the state, if we don't keep ours very clean and that goes downstream, uh, the state operates very differently. Well, we can respond to some if we see there's a problem. Their maintenance programs usually go over, you know, twice a year, once a year, three times a year, and that's, that's the extent of it. So... Right. Thank you, Councilor Novoselsky. Uh, I have to charge you rent pretty soon. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Donnie, uh, just a couple of issues. Uh, the plants on the boulevard, the hanging plants. Yes. And uh, I had a call from one of the uh, residents down on the northern section of the boulevard, and uh, they indicated to me that uh, you know, what we were doing them initially, originally, and uh, then there was a problem with the state. They they wanted to do them or something, and they, they never got done. Or is that correct? A, a partway correct? It's a little bit of truth here, a little bit of truth there. The, the 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 I think the ultimate plan, John, is to eliminate the uh, the hanging baskets and go to a banner type of uh, issue, not only for from a financial standpoint, but from a maintenance standpoint as well. I think that, um, you know, when, when you tally up what it costs for, uh, for the plantings, the, uh, I know uh, Council Hash, you were the guy that started the whole thing, and, yeah, and uh, you know, it was a small program. And so what's been happening now is that all of Broadway, Revere Street, Beachmont, Shirley Ave, uh, all of, uh, uh, you know, even though the state didn't want to do it initially, we were hanging on the beach. So that it's, it's, it's quite an undertaking, and they're expensive. Those baskets can cost, you know, $65 a piece, and then you, uh, and more, depending on, you know, what you may want to, want to buy, and then you have to maintain them. They got to be, they have to be uh, watered every day. It's not something you can let go. You let them go a couple of days, then you get a windstorm, they're blown all over the streets. Uh, they, they, they're causing property damage and, uh, and, 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 and we're forever repairing the poles and the hangers. So it's, it's become uh, because of the number of uh, baskets that we have. But we, we do believe in, in the beautification issue of it. So we're looking at a banner, uh, something that maybe we can bring to each individual neighborhood throughout the city that has their own identity, try to you know, develop something that can identify where are we with that. Where are we with that right now? Because as you know, you know, we're into June, and uh, I, don't, I know it's not going to happen this year, but can we? Well, they, there may be some up before the end. Of the, I know that uh, Paul Agenzio has been working on that diligently, John, and, and he's been carrying the ball on that. Um, I, I really haven't So they have a design already? Uh, they, have a, they have a design the, already? The, well, the, there is one, but I think uh, as this moves forward, yeah. I think that we will be looking at other type of banners that we can put up that will uh, 
you know, kind of identify certain neighborhoods we live in, maybe have take a little civic pride in the in the schools and things of, of that nature. And, you know, so that there's, there are things that we're looking at, uh, but it, I, I think it'll be well worth it once once oh, we, too. I mean, you know, it, once we get it up rolling. The people don't see it now because, I mean, the, the flowers were beautiful, but when you take something away and you haven't replaced it with anything yet. It's, it's bare. There's right. nothing there. And so I, mean, I, think I think in the next... A, in, in, by, by this time next year, I, I'm, sh I'm certain that we'll have a, a much okay. better grip on what's going on. All right. With that said, now, I'm back to fire hydrants. Down in Oak Island, as you know, there was a hydrant hit yeah. a couple of years ago on North Shore Road. Uh, I'm told by Nick Rystrom that the fire chief and he have gone down there and identified uh, an area where that's going. Yes. Can you tell me uh, where that, when that might happen? That is in the uh, fire hydrant replacement program that's being done under contract, John. I don't know the specifics of when that contract is going to be executed, whether it's in this year's um, contract or next year's contract. I can certainly find a follow-up yeah, and find out. That's been yeah. out of service now for three or four years. Uh, at least, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, and, and to be honest with you, John, it's been longer than that because every time we put it up, it get hit by a bus. Yeah. So, it so was now just, it's uh, in a different location yeah, exactly. and, and, and yeah. it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other uh, the other issue uh, I have is uh, on the Ponset Street on the playground. Yes. There was some uh, pieces of equipment like uh, little horses and things that the kids would get on. Well, uh, at least one of them that's gone now, and sticking out of the ground uh, is a a piece of uh, metal that supported that, and uh, and and. Uh, I have mentioned that several times, not to yourself, but uh, to other individuals, and uh, it's uh, still there. And I'm afraid that you know kids are going to start using that, and somebody's going to get hurt, and then we're going to have a, a huge lawsuit on our hands. So I'd like to see that at least pulled out of there and uh, something added in its place, uh, you know, because that's a nice little park down there, and the kids do. Uh, the kids uh, do uh, in, in enjoy enjoy that, uh, so uh, that would be uh, it would be nice if we could get that uh, done. Uh, and, and while we're on the uh, the subject of the Ponset Street, John, uh, we are working towards. Yeah, that was my next. That, that was my next yes. question. You know Mary Jones. I do. Okay, uh, and uh, she's a wonderful person. She absolutely is. She has a little in-house business, which is perfectly legal. She does taxes and. Uh, I've witnessed, my, at least on four occasions, people coming to go into her house, and uh, there's a, a huge puddle there. They couldn't get in there. And as you know, I spoke to uh, the water supervisor, water sewer supervisor, and uh, he made one comment. And uh, I, I, just I know, and I have spoken to him about that, counselor, and uh, there was no truth to that comment that he made. Uh, not to say we're not aware of it. Uh, I think that, you know, when it became a real issue for her, obviously it was right around the tax season, around yeah. April, mm -hmm. and uh, at, that, at that point we weren't uh, really sure what was, was happening in that area because yeah. um, this goes back to the Eastern County Ditch and, and the drainage. It's not just, you know, that one basin or that one street. It's that whole watershed that needs to be addressed, and we are addressing the Eastern County Ditch uh, through some mitigation money that we have. Hopefully we'll have something changed uh, with the DEP and EPA so that we can actually go into that entire Eastern County ditch and clean it from North Shore Road all the way to Revere Street. Uh, but we do know that um, on parts of Sagamore and um, on the Poncha Street, the bottoms of those pipes are completely destroyed. They're, they're gone. It's old corrugated steel. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Magalone's point being is that he didn't want to go in there and jet that with, uh, with, with two to 3,000 pounds of pressure because we'd blow the pipe apart, John. We knew that, so uh, if you notice the last three or four big storms that we had, uh, we have gone down there with a pump and, and actually pumped it across the street so the water, it would eventually go down, but it takes, you know, it takes a couple of days for it to go down. So in the event that, uh, you know, she has a, a serious puddling there. She can call us and we'll pump it. 
but I would say within the next 30 to 60 days that will be rectified. Yeah, we can go in there and replace the... Oh, we're going to replace the pipe. We've got to take yeah. it out. Um, uh, it looks as though we're going to need to have to use uh, ductile iron pipe there because the coverage is, is a little different there. You know, the work they've done down there with water and, and some of the soil work they've done there in the last couple of years. Uh, so the drainage aspect of it is the, is the last. The new water line is, uh, has worked out well down there from what yes, I can see. Uh, there's has. no sinking of the trenches, no. and, I, and I credit that to no, Donnie Tramara being down yeah. there all the yeah. time, keeping yeah. an eye yeah. on the contractors. Yeah. and. Uh, it's just, uh, it's really worked yeah, out well. It has. I still have yet to find one of those trenches that sunk. It's, it's, not, it's not happening. What is that, John? The, the trenches, they're not sinking. Correct. Right. Because they took all the bad fill out and they Correct. put some new stuff in there and Correct. compacted it right. properly. Right. Donnie, thank you very much. Right. I don't have any more questions. Any other on questions, the budget. Uh, It's a very lean budget. I well, wanna, thank you for your time and thank you for your support. I want to compliment the mayor year. on. Uh, the, the, uh, giving us a budget that is yeah, so lean. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want to let you know that uh, the guys in the city yard appreciate the efforts that you put forward on helping us get some new equipment this year and getting a feasibility study going so that we're, at some point we can have uh, uh, a new building. And also the, the fact that uh, you guys have been very supportive of our additional help for our department. So I appreciate it. I know the men appreciate it. This and is a, hopefully the, next year when we have this discussion, uh, we'll have some successes. This, is, this is the first time that I've, as Chairman of Ways and Means, that I've found a budget that there's been really nothing to cut. If you if you started cutting out of this budget, you'd be cutting services that uh, right. and, are sorely needed. And why we're on that, John, I know there is one thing that's probably going to stick out there where we just got a lot of new equipment. You'll see in the new equipment that there is a $25,000 uh, money in there for new equipment. That's not for trucks. Uh, we need to upgrade our uh, trenching because of what's happening uh, in Boston. We do have a, a trench box, but it's not nearly sufficient for what we need. And a trench box system, hydraulic trench box system, is very expensive. Just to buy that's going to be roughly twenty-five thousand dollars. So, and you know, when it comes to the safety of the men, I think it's a, it's an investment that's well worth it, and uh, it's just a necessary thing. So, when you guys peruse this. Uh, budget and you're looking for something that can be cut. No, I, I understand. It's a very it's lean budget and I understand and you guys are trying to do the best you can for the for the tax but when you look at that new equipment that is not for trucks and vehicles it's for safety equipment for uh, uh, trench safety. So that when the guys are you know six, ten, eight feet below the, the ground that they have the proper shoring in, on, on the trenches. And there's and areas the down in that area down there that very 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 easily collapse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much, Donnie. Right. Thank you, Councilors. I appreciate it. And once again, thank you. That uh, concludes the uh, June 15th. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm so used to you sitting there. Uh, okay. Um, okay. What uh, good evening, committee members. Chairman. What is it? What page? Oh, I don't have the page numbers in front of me. We're going to do uh, city clerk, parking clerk, city council, and zoning board of appeals. Okay. All right. You want to... Uh, Madam Clerk, start off with uh, you know the, your your budget and give us an overview. And uh, sure, it's pretty much uh, straightforward um, for our contracted services account. Uh, you will see a fourteen thousand dollar difference. That is actually for the uh, Minute Track software that the City Council uses. Uh, that is going to be coming from uh, ETP funds. Yep. Um, that's the only major change um, on the City Clerk budget. As far as the parking clerk goes, as you are all aware um, we had advertised for the position of a new parking clerk um, and we actually uh, had, uh, created a budget this year um, which there, there hasn't been done one in the past for the, for the parking clerk's office um, <coughs> uh, the new parking clerk is expected to start on uh, July 10th um, do you have any questions yes 
Uh, Who's the new parking clerk? Uh, Richard Wagner, uh, pending uh, him finding suitable housing within the city of Revere. Hopefully, he'll be starting on July 10th. So he's a non-resident, is that? He's from Poughkeepsie, New York, but he's in the process of finding suitable housing at this time yeah. in the city of Revere. Well, I would imagine he wouldn't be commuting back and forth to New York. That would be a very long commute, yeah. Counselor. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't really have any questions. I mean, uh, council salaries, anything like that? There's no increases there no, to speak of? No. Uh, there's no uh, increases in any expenses? Uh, no, it's, it's pretty much uh, level funded. There's nothing else you can... No. Yeah. Unless you guys want to you know, make... I do, I, <laughs> I personally, I, I do think, uh, and I know that's not going to happen this year, but I, I do think with all of the work that's done in your office, uh, you, that office is understaffed to some degree, and uh, you, you know, compared it to is, what it was years ago, and uh, <coughs> I know you could use at least one more body in that uh, office down there, because I, I see the city's growing. Uh, we, you know, we've gone from uh, years ago, maybe 45,000 people in the city, to close to 60,000 now that we know of. And I, I'm in there every day, as you know, and I, and I see people coming in and coming up to that counter. Uh, they're not only uh, bringing uh, new business for you, but sometimes they're very argumentative, and, uh, and that, of course, takes time and, uh, to settle the, uh, whatever the case may be. So I want to I wanna compliment, compliment you and your staff on the uh, job you do there. You're, you're very efficient. You're very effective and uh, under sometimes very difficult circumstances. Thank I just you, had Counselor. to say I that. I really appreciate I, those I comments. Thank you. Is that, is that it, uh, no, no questions? Well, that concludes Thank, the uh, June 15th uh, uh, meeting of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, and uh, we'll be back here again for our third meeting.